All right. Uh, this is an example of epithelioid sarcoma. You can see where in or near the hands or feet this is thick acral skin. It's got a thick stratum corneum, and it's got a nice um, stratum lucidum, that little pale pink band there, which you only see in acral skin or in skin that's been rubbed or scratched. And then down here in the dermis and subcutis, you've got a multi-nodular tumor. There's multiple nodules and lobules of tumor invading down. Um, there's a lot of fibrosis in the backgrounds. Some of the nodules have zones of necrosis in the center. And although this particular case doesn't um, really do it, some cases of epithelioid sarcoma can closely mimic deep granuloma annulari or rheumatoid nodule. They can have that necrobiotic, palisaded necrobiotic granuloma appearance. This one obviously is much more cellular and I don't think anyone would have trouble confusing these, but it's important to remember though that sometimes they can look like rheumatoid nodule and obviously mistaking epithelioid sarcoma for rheumatoid nodule or vice versa would be a disastrous mistake. The, um, oh, here's an area of necrosis right here, tumor cell necrosis. Let's go up to the top though. And take a look at these tumor cells. They are epithelioid cells. They have a lot of abundant pink cytoplasm. The pink cytoplasm in some cases is so dense and abundant that it almost gives the impression of like a, of like a squamous cell, a keratinocyte. It can look like it's so dense. And that's because these cells are in fact loaded with cytokeratin filaments in their cytoplasm. So if you do an immunostain, they will be positive for cytokeratin and also for EMA, okay? So it's important to not mistake them for carcinoma because of the they have an epithelioid appearance and they stain with epithelial markers like EMA and keratin. So the, the growth pattern here, this multiple nodules in the dermis, that would not be typical of carcinoma except for maybe, say, a metastasis. And also, most of the time, epithelial sarcomas arise in children and young adults. I've seen them in people as old as 90 years old. I've seen them the whole range of ages, but they are much more common in um, they, they more commonly arise in young people, okay? They are actually quite a rare tumor though overall. So I guess I shouldn't say they're common, but when they do arise, they have a tendency to be in young people. So they have abundant pink cytoplasm and the nuclei are round or oval and they often have this cleared out, very vesicular pale chromatin, okay? It makes them have this kind of shiny look, this kind of white look to the nuclei. That's another thing that Mark Edgar taught me is that it's like a light's reflecting off of them. He just has, a, a Mark uh, has such a great way with visual analogies that really work and resonate with me at least. So um, this, this vesicular chromatin that's got a kind of white or um, appearance to it is characteristic. There's often uh, punctate or even big prominent nucleoli in the middle. And usually if you look around, you'll find mitoses, mitotic figures. I will point out that both granuloma annulari and rheumatoid nodule can have mitoses too. But usually if you go to higher power, you can easily see that there's a lot of atypia in these tumors. Um, and that quickly tells you that you're not dealing with a rheumatoid nodule or a granuloma annularity. So if there's any doubt, you can do immunostains. Keratin and EMA will stain this. CD34 is often positive. Like I told you, it's not a specific marker. And in the old days, people would try to do combinations of that. But now we have a much better marker, and that's the nuclear stain INI1 or SMARC-B1, S-M-A-R-C-B1. And though that stain is lost in the nuclei of epithelioid sarcoma in most cases, okay? So you'll have positive staining in the background normal cells, but the tumor cells will have negative nuclei, loss of INI1. Now, that's not a specific stain. There's a growing list of tumors that have INI1 loss, rhabdoid tumors in the brain, atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor, rhabdoid tumor in the kidney, and a variety of others. And you can go and look that up online and study that because that's a, that's a hot topic and a, and a growing um, area of interest and research, so know about the different tumors that can have I and I1 loss. But in the setting here of, you know, usually these are the, the distal extremity of young people, often like on the, the ankle or foot or the, the hands or the wrist, um, and they can grow um, for a long time before they're diagnosed, unfortunately, and they tend to metastasize kind of in an almost sporotrichoid pattern where they spread in the soft tissue and the skin upwards, up the extremity, and they get into the lymph nodes. They often, um, unlike many sarcomas, um, most sarcomas do not go to lymph nodes, but the ones that do, epithelioid sarcoma is one of the, the ones that commonly will metastasize to lymph nodes. So very bad, a very aggressive tumor, unfortunately, and thankfully it's very rare.
So epithelioid sarcoma.